Okay, so in this problem we're going to do some sensitivity analysis. We're given a linear optimization problem and we're told that after running the simplex method uh, this is the optimal table. And the question is if we change this 3 in the objective function to a 3 plus delta um, then for what range of delta is the solution still optimal? So since we're only changing a coefficient in the objective function uh, we're not changing the feasible region at all. So if we run the same exact row operations that we did in the original problem, we should land on uh, the same basic feasible solution. So the only question should be, is this uh, basic feasible solution uh, still optimal? So um, we can sort of fill out our, new ta our table for the new problem as if we had run the, the same row operations that we did in the, in the original problem. And by the fundamental insight, we know that rows uh, one and two of the table are not going to change at all. So if we sort of try to fill out this new table here, I can just copy rows one and two uh, from the old from the uh, old table and know that um, this is what the new table is going to look like. So let me copy these here. And so now the only thing that's going to change is going to be row zero. And by the um, fundamental insight, we know that what's going to happen when I change this 3 to a 3 plus delta is that this 0 is going to change to a negative delta, and that's going to be the only change. So let me fill, fill in this table uh, here, negative delta, and then the rest of row 0 is going to be the same. So now the only question is, is this basic feasible solution optimal? So to check for optimality, what we want to do is we want to look at row zero of the table, and we want to check if all the entries are greater than or equal to zero. But before we do that, we have to put this table in proper Gaussian form. So to put it in proper Gaussian form, um, basically what has to happen is that uh, x1 and x2 are the basic feasible solution, or the, base, the basic variables here. So uh, what we need to happen is that the entries in row zero above them need to be zero. So what has to happen is that this negative delta needs to be changed to a zero. So in order to do that, I'm going to add delta times row 2 to row 0. So when I do that, uh, what I get is that row 0 looks like 1, uh, 1, and then I'm adding delta times row 2 to row 0, so I get a 0 here, I get a 0 here, I get a um, 1, uh, Let's see, I'm adding delta times row zero here, so I get a one minus delta here, and I get a one plus delta here. And on the right hand side, I get a 10 plus two delta. And then the rest of the table is the same. So the only question here is whether all, for the, uh, for the optimality test, is whether all of these entries are greater than or equal to zero. So we are optimal, We are optimal so we are optimal if and only if um, one minus delta is greater than or equal to zero and one plus delta is greater than or equal to zero. So this means that delta needs to be in the range negative one to one.